All across the country, about 80, 9, 12, and Tea Party groups across the country got a letter from the IRS. And it had a lot of really invasive questions. Want to know the names of their speakers at their tea parties. Wanted to know what their credentials were. Wanted to know the names of family members of volunteers for tea parties in 912 groups. Wanted to know all kinds of really invasive information. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's a tax lawyer out there that can answer the question. I don't know if they send this also to any other 501c4 organizations. But it's my understanding, what I've been told is that the Kentucky 912 group applied for a 501c4 like two years ago and never heard anything from the IRS until one day they get this letter demanding all this information. Is that intimidation? Sure sounds like it to me. Um, So let's go to the phone lines. And uh, we've got Thomas Massey, who is um, running for 4th District uh, U.S. Congress and uh, joins me here now. Thomas, how are you, sir? Doing well, Leland. Good to talk to you today. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that you and, of course, Andy Barr, who's running in the 6th District, and some other uh, current congressmen around the country as well, have come out in support of these 912 and, and, uh, and Tea Party groups. And, and you guys concur that this is, this is the kind of intimidation and misuse of government power that we as a Tea Party have been warning about. You know, when did we start keeping lists of people that speak at events? I'm on some of those lists. I've been to these 912 organizations. <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what what's really uh, scares me is they waited for a year and a half, two years on this stuff, and then they came to Eric Wilson, the organizer of the 912 Project in Kentucky, and told him he has three weeks to comply. Right. That- and I read the, I've read the letter that the IRS sent him, and it, sent him, and it starts out with this very scary uh, – foreboding statement that says, you know, under the penalty of perjury, you will supply all of this information. Wow. Wow. You know, and, and again, I, the, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I understand 501c4 groups are a little different than 501c3s. They're, they're, they're nonprofit, obviously, but these are okay. groups that can, um, you know, uh, take a political stand on issues. If you're a 501c4, you can take a political stand. So, um, it, it, it baffles me that they want this information because whose business is it? It's a, we're talking about freedom of speech. We're talking about freedom of assembly. In fact, this strikes at the very core of the First Amendment. It certainly does. You know, if we let them keep this up, the only right that we're going to have is the right to remain silent. <laughs> that's a, Yeah. <laughs> it, no, I mean, it, 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 you say that, but that's absolutely true. I mean, yeah, I hope uh, people understand the impact of this. One of, one of the crazier requests in there is to a list of all the family members of board members that are planning to run for office. That sounds like the thought police to me in some dystopian future. You know, how can you know what somebody is planning in their head? Yeah, that's true. And it, that, well, that brings it to mind another thing. Um, I think when you spoke at, a, at, at Tea Party events, you were not running for Fourth District Congress at that time. Um, Absolutely the, not. Yeah, I, did, I had no idea that I'd be running for this position. I was just going out trying to convince other people to get involved publicly. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that, because of the Tea Party movement, and for that matter, um, you know, the, 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 the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is, you know, ideologically we don't line up, but, you know, now I haven't heard that they've gotten any letters like this, but, you know, I wouldn't want them to because, you know, whether no matter what the ideology is, uh, we as Americans have a right to assemble, and, and, you know, people are often inspired by events like that to get involved in politics. There's no way to judge, you know, especially two years later, what somebody might be thinking. You know, Leland, I was inspired at the first Tea Party I ever attended. They opened the microphone up, and uh, I got up there and spoke and was well-received, and that kind of inspired me to run for judge executive in Lewis County. Wow. But yeah. you, you touched on something, too. The question is, did ACORN, did MoveOn.org, did these other organizations get the same letter? Are, are we being treated fairly across the board? Yeah, yeah. Or is the executive branch of the government using these laws as a bludgeon? Yeah, well, when you think about from a from an informational standpoint, I can actually understand that if the IRS is going to be policing 501 or 504 C3s, whatever, then I can right. understand needing to know, okay, let's let's see what the – the people that are involved in this organization, what is the goal of it, et cetera. But when you apply for that status two years ago, never hear another word until you get an under penalty of perjury letter, right. um, something is definitely amiss in that process. And you know what else the letter said, and I just read it. 
that said, if you don't get this done within 21 days, we start all over from the very beginning. We're going to, you, you have to reapply. Wow. Wow. Un- it, unbelievable. Uh, they asked for copies of all training material, date and location at every event. One that I found particularly onerous was uh, a transcript of the speeches and videos of the speeches and audio recordings of the speeches right. that were given at these events. Yeah, and who has how those, could, really? <laughs> yeah, how could you gather all that up together in 21 days? Yeah, and, and, and how, how could you be expected, if you're not told ahead of time, if you have an event like this, that these have to be records that are kept? Again, freedom of speech never implied that, you know, Benjamin Franklin had to have records of his, uh, of his addresses that he made on courthouse squares, you know. It's, it's patently anti-American. I, I agree.